on Corbin's Ride On. The Oklahoma custom builder who's rocking both coasts. Plus, what's new and way cool from the Wizards Workshop at Corbin. But now, we're off across the Atlantic to get better acquainted with one of the spiciest Italians of all. So hold on tight. At the time you purchase a Motoguzzi, you become a part of the world of Motoguzzi. I found Motoguzzi very smooth, never sharp. So you know, something that seems uh, like an Italian food. So smooth, rounded, and very classic. In uh, Moto Guzzi is a, a big uh, a club in the world. When uh, one, one person buy a Moto Guzzi, automatically it's a Moto Guzzi uh, fans, uh, supplier, part of us. In Italian we say that uh, red is color of, uh, of passion, of love, of art, and so Moto Guzzi with this color um, show the, the passion for motorcycle, for uh, Italian motorcycle. It's uh, an engine that uh, talks to you, has a pulsation, so you have an art beating in reality, not only an engine, not a power generator. People is asking for power, but in reality, from our research, from our feeling, from our chat, people is asking for trust, not power. They, they would like to buy power because they don't understand at the moment what is torque, but torque is the key. Passion, love, passione, amore, that's Moto Guzzi. Hold on, more Moto Guzzi plus a visit to Covington's Customs on Corbin's Ride On. Jerry Covington was known on the West Coast in the 80s for his custom hot rods, but the public decided his future was in motorcycles. The customers and the friends actually is the ones that got me doing motorcycles because I'd, I'd planned on doing street rides at the time and it kind of just took over and, and cut me out of time to do the hot rods. These days, Covington Customs is branching out into several projects from its home in Woodward, Oklahoma. Our number one deal is custom bikes uh, and our production bikes are coming right along and getting stronger and stronger. And we did them to, so people that didn't have the money to buy the high-end custom bikes, we still had a nice bike to sell them. The first thing you should know about this bike shop, it's a family thing. The family aspect of it, uh, it's pretty cool. My four sons that work here, and the, my wife, and I got my uh, sister, then I got my nephew that works here. Every day is a new experience for us, especially when you've got your practically your whole family here working, it's never a dull moment. We have something new every day. And it's, it's totally unusual because there's no fighting. We all get along and uh, we all take each other's ideas and use them. If we think your idea sucks, we're going to tell you that. <laughs> you know, it, it usually isn't that way. The guys have good ideas. They bring them to us. It's all working towards the same goal. We want the most cutting edge, cleanest, coolest bike that we can make. 
One thing we don't want is a bike that's basically a picture just to look at. Our bikes, we want them to be able to be ridden without somebody having to fight it down the road. From sketches in the break room to full custom builds, this family is all about one thing all the time. We live, eat, and breathe anything that has wheels or a motor. It, that is our life. Anything that's uh, got a cool factor to it and has wheels on it, I like it. And every Covington has to be perfect. One of the things that sets ours apart is the attention to detail. Uh, we hide all of our lines, we hide all of our wiring. You never ever see a weld or nothing. The whole bike's totally smooth before it's painted. The littlest parts is as important as the biggest part. We make the bike flow from front to back and uh, we try to make it where not one part overpowers another part. The rule at Covington is don't buy it, build it. From frames to sheet metal to CNC machined parts to paint, just about everything on a Covington Custom is made by Covington. What we like about it the best is we control what it looks like and we control the quality on it. What we don't make, uh, we try to make sure as much as possible is American made. We're real strong into American made parts and quality parts. We're always doing something different and a little bit crazier than the one before and a little bit more radical than the one before. Most builders build one style of bike and we build anything on two wheels. It, uh, we do bobbers, we do low stretch pro street bikes, we do choppers. Most people have a style and they stick to it and you'll see a little change every now and again, but every bike we build is quite a bit different. And it's just whatever somebody wants it because that's what custom's all about, building what they want instead of just one style. And I think in the custom end of it, that's what you got to do to stay on the edge or, or else you just get passed by. There's a lot of good builders out there and a lot of new guys with some great ideas. And you just got to stay on top of it. So customs from Covington continue to evolve and their production bikes come in several models, including Bobber, Beach Cruiser, Chopper, Speedster and Speed Demon, all listed in both the Kelly Blue Book and the NADA Guide. Woodward, Oklahoma may seem off the beaten path, but plenty of custom bike enthusiasts are finding Covington Customs. But we have customers from all over the United States and we have some customers that's actually bought seven bikes and we have a lot of customers that's bought three bikes and four bikes. I feel like five years from now we'll be doing the same stuff we're doing, just probably more of it. We're revving up for a trip through the colorful history of Moto Guzzi, next on Corbin's Ride On. The legendary Italian mark Moto Guzzi was born in Mandello, Italy in 1919 when a blacksmith named Giorgio Ripamonti and an engineer named Carlo Guzzi built a prototype motorcycle that was radically different. They found financing from a Genoese shipbuilder, Emanuele Parodi, and hired a mechanic named Giovanni Ravelli. Carlo Guzzi was uh, the creator, the genius that uh, designed uh, uh, a lot of the models that we could see in this museum. Uh, Parodi was the financial manager and Ravelli uh, would uh, be the, the tester. The prototype model featured a low slung frame and a 500cc horizontal single cylinder four valve overhead cam engine. Fueled by Parodi's cash, by 1921 Moto Guzzi was off to the races. Literally, to promote the new motorcycles, Moto Guzzi went racing and beginning with a victory at Targa Florio, went on to rack up a mind-boggling record 3,329 wins. The big history of uh, Moto Guzzi in race uh, is from the 20s to the 57. Because the story of Moto Guzzi, because this old story, nice story, romantic story and so on, the people think that Moto Guzzi makes uh, something like vintage bikes. But it's not true, because uh, as you know, Moto Guzzi is the top winning brand all over the world in the race history. In 1934, Moto Guzzi introduced the famous Guzzi Twin with its highly original 120-degree V-twin power plant. So when the war finished, 
uh, Moto Guzzi started to produce uh, little bikes with little engine that have little cost. After spending the post-World War II era building successful, lightweight economy bikes and scooters, the Mark regained motorcycling's high ground in 1955 with the release of legendary designer Giulio Carcano's sensational 72-horsepower Guzzi 508-cylinder. Considered by many one of the most extraordinary bikes ever built. Then, in 1967, Carcano's 703cc 90-degree transverse V-twin engine made its debut in the Guzzi V7. That engine design has become a Moto Guzzi signature. Amazingly, Moto Guzzi is still in operation in the same location where it all started in 1921. And the good part of the story is that uh, the actual building is the same building where the story starts. So the feeling of the place, where is it, is huge. Among the historical artifacts preserved here at Mandello is the wind tunnel, designed and built by Moto Guzzi to develop the aerodynamics of their motorcycle designs. Moto Guzzi was built a wind tunnel in the 1950s and was the first wind tunnel produced in the world. It was used for testing vehicles, for testing motorcycles, but also for testing uh, uh, ski equipment, sporty equipment. Any trip to the Moto Guzzi factory has to include a tour of the museum, where one after another of the milestones in this Mark's history are kept on display to commemorate over 80 years of passion, dedication, and craftsmanship. more with the people who make the Moto Guzzi on Corbin's Ride On. The history of Italy's legendary Moto Guzzi is filled with firsts, as any dedicated Guzzista will tell you. We have the first Gran Turismo motorcycle, that is the GT Norge. Moto Guzzi really is the first bike with the flexible frame at the back. Because at the time the innovation was too high, the people don't believe that the bikes stay together because of this uh, link uh, to the rear. And the, f the brother of uh, Carlo Guzzi, Giuseppe, takes the bike and drives it in the 38 to the Arctic Circle and came back. That kind of intense dedication to bulletproof quality is still the motivating force at Moto Guzzi where new models continue to blaze a path of original design, beauty, and terrific functionality. One of the reviews I liked more was uh, after the testing of the Grisa. Now, Moto Guzzi is able to play for the Italian brands with Armani, Gucci, and so on. That's the new Moto Guzzi. So the new Breva 1100, or the new Grizo 1100 are the first two toys, let me say, uh, that gives this sensation. With the Grizo, it's a very important bike because in reality is a bike that opens a new segment. Because if you want to compare the Grizo with other bikes, it's very difficult. You could compare with a Buell, with a Triumph, uh, with a Harley V Road. But they are all different because Grizzo is long, has a good handling, power, not too much, good brakes. You start driving and you, dri uh, you find yourself driving very aggressive and sport. Each hour bike is a part of us. So, very attention, high quality, and uh, let me say, Every bike, uh, we put a, a signature on side. Mm -hmm. 
One of the reasons behind Moto Guzzi's success is the dedication and skill of its workforce, many of whom have worked for the company their entire adult lives, and some of whom are actually second and third generation Moto Guzzi employees. And they have this passion, this, you know, it's a uh, heart beating for the factory. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a matter if they are workers or employees, but they are inside their factory. Uh, you know, Moto Guzzi is uh, a very historical brand uh, and uh, we have uh, here uh, people that work uh, that more than 30 years and we have people that work here and his father worked here before them. It's not only race, uh, it's not only passion, it's not uh, uh, only way of move, of travel. Uh, Moto Guzzi is a way, a way of life. Passion, love. Passione, amore, that's Moto Guzzi. Moto Guzzi still blends rare old world craftsmanship with cutting edge new technology and materials. It's the fruit of a combination of tradition and innovation that has always characterized the bikes bearing the Mandelo Eagle, symbol of one of the great legends in the history of motorcycling. Coming up, raising the bar on custom accessories on Corbin's Ride On. There's a reason why Corbin continues to lead the way in custom saddles and accessories like saddlebags and fairings. They actually listen to motorcycle riders. Well, customers are the ultimate king. I mean, we're here for one reason, and that's to serve motorcycle riders, make them more comfortable, make them look better, make them enjoy the bike more. So we are totally customer driven. If it doesn't work better than what's already there, then why build it? We just apply that whole that theory to everything we do. Another difference at Corbin, these guys ride. We have avid motorcyclists in the building, and then we have some rabid motorcyclists in the building as well. Nose in the wind, eating bugs, going places and smelling the dirt, it works for us. Motorcycling is not a casual little hobby, motorcycling is a lifestyle. And your designers and engineers have to understand that and be part of that thinking, commitment. We've become better at embracing working with and working for and serving the motorcyclists, even after 40 years, and that's something that, that we're proud of. We communicate internally very well. Corbin stays in front by getting the latest models, sometimes even borrowing them from customers. That was the story behind the elegant line of accessories for the new Yamaha Roadliner and Stratoliner. So Yamaha came up with this great line of bikes this year, and it was very inspiring motorcycle. To look at it, it's all Art Deco. Looks like it rolled out of 32, you know, and from the romantic era of design. We saw that early on. First picture I saw, I saw that bike, I said, this is going to be a rush. We've got to get one and get on this. Once Corbin had the new Yamahas in-house, it was up to Special Projects man Chan Starling to strip the bikes naked and send them on to the Wizards Workshop to get new bags, chin spoiler, fairing, and saddle. We released this stuff at Cincinnati this year at the Big Dealer Expo. And uh, the guys from Yamaha were there, and they were stunned. They, they loved it. They absolutely loved it. It's, and you know, when you see the parts, it is, it's jaw-dropping. You, you, you look at the bike and how well it came out to begin with, and then you look at these parts that are just, you know, it, they fit. Everything goes on with nuts and bolts. You don't have to do any grinding or welding. Saddlebags bolt right on. Customers not faced with any kind of mysteries about how things go together. We've never designed a part that required any fabrication skills whatsoever. If you know the difference between a wrench and a screwdriver, you're pretty much going to be able to handle it. Even, you know, a desk jockey like myself can put these things on. The real secret behind these bags? They don't just look good. The nicest thing about it is you don't even really notice 
the size of the bags. When, when you look at them, they're so well integrated. They follow the curve of the fender, they follow the lines of the bike, and that you know tricky little three stripes of chrome running down the side. You don't even realize that those bags each hold 45 liters. Um, the Stratoliner bags, the leather bags that come on the Stratoliner, um, hold about 22 liters. So they're literally twice the size of what's available without looking twice the size. I mean, you, know, you look at this bike and you don't, you don't look at it and say, wow, you know, who, who, who duct taped the Samsonite on the side? It's, it's a, you know, they're beautiful pieces. The same design excellence applies to the new Yamaha fairings that sport a traditional Art Deco look while applying Corbin's trim tab technology to move the point of highest wind pressure behind the steering head to improve stability and handling. Well, again, that form and function both work together very nicely and make, make a product that works. We're really looking for ergonomics and comfort, really looking for that train going through the night 1932 look, you know. One of the very first comments I heard was, it's hard to tell where the Yamaha stops and the Corbin begins. And my response to that was, thanks. That was the idea, strangely enough. And of course, from chin spoiler to saddlebags, Corbin's accessories for the new Yamaha Roadliner and Stratoliner, like all Corbin products, are built to perform like the legendary Corbin saddle. The original seat that comes with the bike will work okay if you don't really go very far, but as soon as you become a distance rider or you need a backrest and things like that, that's where we come into play. Then lately we've been adding to our product line our luggage and our fairings, which make it more comfortable, faster, more efficient, and more convenient for carrying your, your luggage and stuff. Next week on Corbin's Ride On, how they made the DVD on how to build a bobber, plus a look inside one of motorcycling's biggest aftermarket catalogers. And in Shop Talk, what goes around is the wheels. We'll get all the straight scoops, so don't miss it.